welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. Have you ever wondered what is possible beyond possible? What is the thing you've been wondering and inquiring about? Are you just feeling stuck and don't know why? Are you thinking or are you seeing? Seeing allows us to expand and have this other experience. We want to invite you for that wake-up call. We want to invite your spirit, your soul, so to be more alive, more connected. Glenn Brooks has been a life coach for over 33 years, author of Divorced to Patterns, Not Each Other, an explorer of what is possible. He has worked with people all around the world. Join us for a wake-up conversation, a dialogue with you, and our regular co-hosts, the money healer, Stephanie J. Alvarez and Dr. Nicole Kane. We will have some of the most interesting contributors. We will be talking to some of the most interesting people and have some of the most resourceful teachers, wisdom-filled people from around the world join us. Share your voice, ask the questions, become free of the known into a new world of possibility. We are going to talk about all the things you wonder about, how to live, how to heal, how to connect, how to love, how to be seen. Your life is precious. Enjoy it. Hello, I'm Glenn Brooks. It's good being with you today here on the Vibrant Living Network. So we're starting a series. It's going to be a year-long series. It's probably, going to be more, it's probably going to be more than a year. For the last 28 years, I've been doing ongoing features on sacred medicine, vibrant medicine, and really vibrant living. And uh, so today I wanted it with our, our wonderful panel contributors. So vibrant medicine. I was just on the way here thinking about this, and I thought I would just want to kind of define and explore this with you. And I thought I would start off with the contrast, kind of maybe a little how I grew up. And how I grew up was, uh, you know, I saw I, my family members, none of them were really healthy. Uh, as an example, I never saw my grandmother stand up. She used to always be laying in bed, and she had very, she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. My grandfather, you know, even though I had the closest bond to him, uh, he was diagnosed with uh, diabetes, and I was going to go live with him when I was 17. And he went to the doctor after my grandmother passed away, like six months later. And the doctor said he was normal, whatever that means. That's the opposite of vibrant medicine, actually. Normal. We're looking at a level of robust well-being, wonderment, awareness, biologically becoming younger. So in a sense, you're growing young. I want to acknowledge Dr. Ashley Montague as one of my mentors. Anthropologist who wrote a book in his 80s called Growing Young. So vibrant medicine is really about, and I'll get back to my, my family of origin, but vibrant medicine is really this ability to wake up to this thing inside of you, your vital force, this vital system. It's that inner Geiger counter. You know, you, you could call it your intuition. And what we've kind of grown up around, like I did, was sort of a suppressive system. You know, like in other words, if you had a symptom, the idea was to treat it and make it the enemy. It was very rare that someone probably sat you down and really saw you deeply and said, I see this wonder in you, this wonderment, this this uh, way of vitalness inside of you. Let's speak to that. Let's have the kind of medicine, vibrant medicine, that actually is restorative, uh, vitalizing, and also looks at you from the idea that there could be more life in there, more of this vital, rhythmic pulsation that's in you. So over the last many years, I've had people, there's an example, I had a woman come on my show, she read a book called Who Said So? And she talked about, she told totally healed herself of MS. She was actually going to lift weights after we did the show. I've had so many, so many people basically say that a lot of medicine lives in the known. But what, what it's in the known about is stopping and fixing. Very little about vitalizing and exploring what's possible. There's practitioners all around the world. You're going to meet many on this ongoing series. We're also going to do a vibrant medicine conference, which is, again, this idea of growing younger, vital, and really going beyond the naming of diseases. You know, when I did my series with Dr. Um, no, what comes to me? He's probably one of the foremost authorities in the world on, on diabetes. And, one of the, and we ended that series. One of the things he said, when I want you guys to reflect on this, this is so true. He says, when, he says, when I travel the world to study diabetes. So diabetes is a marker for aging, by the way. That's what diabetes is. It's a degenerative condition. 
but your your aging accelerates. He says, you know, he goes, well, it's very simple. If people, if you want to get diabetes, go to the American Diabetes Association website and read their description of what you do to take care of diabetes. That gives you diabetes. So what happens is some of the definitions and ways we treat things actually continue the obstacles, continue the thing called disease. So vibrant medicine is the resources, awareness, the compassion, the affordability, the vibrant lifestyle that allows you to wake up and live this different life, this relational connection with that, what's in you and others. And we're going to explore that on multiple levels. Kim Chi Moore is an internationally renowned practitioner of both energetic and biological medicine. She looks to see what's not just well in the person, but what fits that person, like their fingerprint, by testing and working with them and giving them different protocols to wake up that level of health. Dr. Nicole Kane's a renowned homeopath nature path, working with people on their, their fingerprint, the remedies that touch that part, that vital system, that vital force in them. Um, Stephanie Alvarez with us, she definitely works with people as a, a facilitator these days as a rainmaker. But, you know, we all have this thing, we all have this rainmaker effect on each other. We actually have this effect that we actually, what we observe and see in someone else, we wake up in them. So, Another aspect of vibrant medicine is really seeing beyond this person's illness script. Who are they? One of the most renowned acupuncturists I've ever met, he said to me, anybody could be illness. And he goes, when he opens the door at one of these large clinics, he opens the door, he looks at the person, and he sees a violin player. He sees a dancer. He sees a storyteller. So we've got to get beyond just this frozen image of just an illness. Kim Chi, welcome to the program. Welcome, Nicole, Stephanie. Kim Chi, I thought I would start with you. We also have so many wonderful on. conversations. Hi. You're there. Great. He's with us. Yeah, so I'm, thought here. I you I'm here. Speak. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah, thank you for the uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, thank I you. am Kim Chi Moyer. I'm really honored to be here and started this vibrant medicine show with you today. My journey is uh, somewhat a little bit um, unusual. I... Um, escaped on a boat with my family in 1975 after the fall of uh, Vietnam, uh, uh, South Vietnam. And uh, so I get to see at a young age uh, what's going on. I see a lot of sufferings. I see humanity at its worst. So I journey, my journey made it to Singapore and then to America. I wanted to do something to help people. And without knowing much, I just I was just there to wanting to do something to feed them, to close them, and um, and then I, as I wanted to continue to travel and help more people, um, the uh, uh, at the time the the um, organization that I worked with told me that kimchi is really nice that you have a good heart, but you know what we need you to have a real skill. Uh, why don't you become a doctor or a nurse? Then we can use you. Then I say, okay, all right, mm-hmm. then I'm going to become a doctor. Well, because I know if I, uh, I'm not a good nurse already, I, because if uh, I have too many questions, if the doctor tells me what to do, I don't take the order r- really well. I'm going to ask so many questions, I already know I'm not going to be a good nurse. So I chose to <laughs> become a doctor. And then they suggested it that I should become a surgeon. Um, and so I saw my life at 30 years old, becoming a surgeon, spending the day in the operating room, giving out the drugs. I told myself, well, that would be too late. I know in Vietnam, there are ways that we can help the body heal before it breaks. So I did not want to go through that round and become a surgeon. So I have to find another way. So at the time in 1980, um, I was introduced to um, uh, acupuncture and oriental medicine. And by the, in the early 80s, it was still considered a little bit voodoo uh, to do all this energy work. But I well, went to that path anyway, graduated, become an acupuncturist, and practice oriental medicine, do a lot of herbal medicine. And immediately after a few, uh, uh, a year later, I then met my husband, uh, who introduced me to German biological medicine and German functional medicine. And that became uh, uh, my uh, my focus for the last 26 years. So why m- I made my way to Germany, that's when I realized how advanced Germans are in terms of natural medicine and bioenergetic medicine. So that became uh, a long affair, a, 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 
um, a focus. And I spent the last 26 years just sitting down using uh, my uh, both my biofeedback technology and resonance technology to communicate with the body and see what is it that the body wants. And to prove it to myself that the method works and to convince myself that, yes, there's validity to it, I just spend eight hours a day, 10 hours a day on one or two persons at most, and I just ask every question possible to really prove to me the method works. So after 26 years, I collect so much data that I know there's a way to communicate with the body, and that was the foundation of my uh, uh, the, the healing modality that I call resopathy. So that's my background. I call myself these days a resopath. A resopath is someone who uses resonance and biofeedback technology to gather biological data by measuring the body electrical field. And you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed if we have a way to converse with the body and let the body talk back. We'll be amazed what it tells us. Because as practitioner, we make assumption as practitioner we go by our expertise uh, by giving and uh, making recommendation what if we can let the body tell us what it wants what it needs and and mm -hmm. it will give us another angle to express itself and we will be more targeted with our results and Kim Chi, I know the last time that we were on, and really quickly, I wanted to acknowledge that we do have Susie Marie on the food decoder. So welcome, Susie, as well. But Kim Chi, I know the last time we were Hello, speaking, Susie. you were talking about um, Regulat, and you were talking about you had tested it, and you didn't get a chance to finish what you were saying about that. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that when you tested Regulat? Yes. Well, yeah. Let's so, just let's just probably let's, 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 a lot of people. Kimchi, what we should do is tell we should talk about what reg, Regulat is. So, how the conversation of Regulat came up last time was that Regulat is is a a non standardized food supplement that both has probiotic and enzymes and is a, is kind of a elixir, a whole body tonic, and you use it in your practice. So, a lot of people were really curious what it is and what your comment would be about it. Yes, I'll be more than happy to talk about Regulat. Um, you know, as I, what I do in my practice is I measure the electrical field and the person would hold on to a, a, a hand electrode. I would insert a substance into circuit with the body and then measure the electrical conductivity to see is there a shift or not. So if I plug in a remedy, a supplement, um, what does it do to the body? How does the body re react to it? Does it resonate with it or does it not resonate with it? Does it increase the conductivity or does it lower the conductivity? So through that process, I just sit and record data all day long and ask many questions. So what I found is that when a substance just keep testing a lot through many conditions, through different variations, that substance will get my attention. Is Regulat is one of those supplements that when I insert into the circuit with the body, I get, often get a positive reading, and the reading would be positive for, for example, um, dysbiosis of small intestine, a large intestine, for yeast, for even some type of, um, of bacterial infection. So the Regulat often test effective, tolerated, and it came up a lot in various cases, not just digestive disturbance, uh, bunches, but also uh, from autoimmune to cancer, late stage cancer even, and to even general um, uh, gut issues. So Regulus is a wonderful, wonderful uh, remedy. Uh, uh, that I use very often in my right. practice. We'll come, we'll, I want to um, thank you, thank you, Kim Shi. Go ahead, Stephanie. Go ahead, give up the website for Regular for people who want to learn more about Regular. Um, what's the website, Stephanie? Regular R E G U L A T hyphen U S A dot com. Regular hyphen U S A dot. Thank you. 
You're listening to Vibrant Living, the Vibrant Living Network. I'm Glenn Brooks, along with Dr. Nicole Kane, Kim Chi Moyer, Stephanie Alvarez, Susie, the food decoder, as they call her. What's real food? How do we decode it? We have a seg- we have a segment coming up with Susie. Um, so I love Kim Chi. I'm such I love your your story. You know, our life story. And what impacts us is so profound because a lot of times something's happened and our system is still playing that out. You know, for instance, you fell off your bicycle and someone told you not to cry, you know, and your body kind of responds to that, thinks it's the truth. Don't cry. And you kind of hang on to that. So vibrant medicine is expressive. It's awareness-based. In my, in my situation, before I passed the baton to Nicole, Dr. Nicole Kane, in my situation, I pretty much realized that school – was an interruption uh, for me around true education and true wonder. I read Mark Twain. He said uh, he said he didn't let his schooling get in the way of his education. So I began to change my diet when I was about 17 after my grandfather died because I really wondered how come I could not know something so precious. And by the way, what's precious is, yes, what feeds us, what feeds our soul, what feeds our relationships. And then what is it that we express? that really makes us want to sing and then sing together. Nicole, I'm so happy you're here on our Vibrant Medicine Hour. I've always, since I first spoke to you and heard you, you know, our first conversation, I always felt you've been such a deep family member. I'm happy you're here. What's your take on this idea of vibrant medicine and the way you practice it and what what comes to you through the conversation? It's such a joy. Oh, I guess, I guess, Nicole, I apologize. We're We're actually going to take a brief pause. And our our deep meal. Join us for our deep meal conversation. Vibrant Living Medicine right here on the Vibrant Living Network. If your life's precious, enjoy us. Stay with us. We'll continue. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. In the wake of a disaster, what one thing can you send that will help people the most? A blanket, a tent, a sandbag, a doctor. Actually, if you send a monetary donation, you send all these things. Even a small donation can make a big impact and can quickly become exactly what people affected by disaster need most. In the wake of a hurricane, your monetary donation can make a huge difference to those in need. To donate, visit supporthurricanerelief.org. That's supporthurricanerelief.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hello, yes, this is Glenn Brooks. You're listening to the Vibrant Living Network. We're discussing vibrant medicine. We're living vibrant medicine moment to moment to moment. We pay attention as we as we pay attention and we listen differently. With this more uh, Kim Chi Moyer, biological and energetic ma- medicine practitioner, Dr. Cole Kane, Stephanie, Susie, Nicole. I'm sorry about that. You got cut off for a second, or we got we got to pause right when you begin to respond. <laughs> Well, we had everyone waiting with just a bated breath to see what would come next. I, I know, know, I know. That you had the you had the best you had the best you had the best sequence. Everybody's like, "Wow!" <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I was really inspired, Kim Chi, by when I was doing research on the work that you've done. I, I'm so excited to to have you on the show. And one thing that mm. that Glenn and I have talked about. That's incredibly inspiring, and part of the vibrant to the name, the Vibrant Living Network, is that vibrance is about being full of energy, full of enthusiasm, bright, striking, pulsating, and we we love the sequence because it talks about how can we change the way medicine 
looks at people in such a way that encompasses vibrance. And so a way that we talked about doing that is to evoke wonderment. And so what I love about what you're doing, Kimchi, is you're taking that wonderment as kind of like our bullseye. Okay, we're going for vibrance. We're going for wonderment. Mm -hmm. And what you're offering is a way to find out what the body needs in order to achieve that. It's, it's honoring the body and understanding that it has the capacity for that. And you're acting as a facilitator. And, and so I'm so excited about that, Kimchi. Thank you for the work that you've done. Oh, thank you so much, Nicole. You really got that down so clearly. Yes, um, the body is an intelligent system with um, trillion cells and uh, thousands of species of different microorganisms all cohabitating together that perform this supercomputer, which is us that allow us to move, to talk, to make decisions. Amazing thing that we can do with our body and create all these wonderful things on earth, the buildings, the airplane that we all created. So it's such an, an amazing um, machine supercomputer, yet we just think that we can just put anything on it and force it to behave a certain way. Yes, it does behave a certain way in reaction to what we put into the body. And therefore, sometimes it's not in balance. We start to have symptoms, headache, pain, discomfort. Right, And so if we involve it and ask what is it that you want, and by giving it what it needs, it works for us. And suddenly we imbalance in harmony and then we feel better. So I just thought that it's about time. We do, we do need to recognize the body has a voice. What if we have a, a, a mechanism to communicate with it and let it talk back to us? So I'm just pioneering in that technology and bring it to the world. You know, I asked, I asked the medicine man. Yeah, I love that. Go ahead, go ahead, Nicole. I'm just part of what's happening is um, it, it, it's such a it's such a wondrous question that can be explored in so many ways, vibrant medicine and uh, and the cells and it's it's so beautiful, um, inspiring and and so um, kind of different. And when I when I ask when we teach, when I talk to people about medicine, um. Well, I'll, I'll share this quickly because I think it might it might touch some people. Uh, and then Nicole, I love you. I love you to pick right up. So I was working with this medicine man, Claude Piler, and he had developed this. He had developed a sacred. I say sacred. We did a series called "How Sacred Medicine Can Save Modern Man," and we talked a lot about not just doing something, but the process of being and relating to things. You know, like that that was significant. That it wasn't just it was kind of like that really our lives are in some sense is a big ceremony and that the more we pay attention, the more the, the whole life becomes different. Relate, you know, it, there's a connection. Anyway, I said to him one day, I said, how would you def define sacred medicine? And he said, well, how would you define a sacred medicine practitioner? And he said, well, his wife had this mole and one, she was a kindergarten teacher and one of the kids, I guess, he jumped on her and, and uh, kind of scraped the mall, and next thing she knows, she was at this oncologist's office, and this, they had this big meeting between the oncologist and the surgeon. And he was sitting with his wife, a pilot, and he said, "The oncologist." He basically was saying that as the oncologist spoke about her condition, she was dying. Literally, he said he was like the spirit and the soul was going out of her. And so during the meeting, the surgeon actually took the. Uh, uh, he took the oncologist by the belt buckle and threw him out throughout the office. And he closed the door and he says, he goes, I see a different story here. And Cloud Pilot said to me, the different story was re really about his wife healing and coming back and coming forward. And I guess you could say that, that as we speak about the, the big life of vibrant medicine, it's really about that wonderment, Nicole, that, that we could move into and really own in a way that might be very different from what you've ever heard about well-being. Please continue, Nicole. You were you were going to say something. I just I just I'm so inspired having this conversation. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. It's because it's this shouldn't be novel and surprising. I feel like there's something in all of us that when these words are said, it's strange. But at the same time, I feel like there's something inside of us that sets our souls on fire. Like yes, this is incredible. This feels yeah. so authentic. 
And what I love about what kimchi, what you're doing is that you're, you're basically doing individualized medicine. It's not a one size fits all. It's not a, well, you have a headache, take this aspirin or you could use functional medicine and say, well, take this turmeric because it's an anti-inflammatory, but rather you're looking at in what unique mm -hmm. way is the, ba the body out of balance so that we could restore your individual out of balance state to balance. And, and so it's really neat that it's so personalized and so individualized and honoring that body in its process of, of producing symptoms as an attempt to become a state of balance. I love that. I think it's really incredible. Dr. Um, Nicholas, uh, Dr. Nicholas, he was a very renowned uh, Gonzalez, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. We became very good friends. He was probably the most renowned nutritional oncologist. He was at the Sloan Kettering 20 years. The first thing he said to me when we discussed vibrant medicine was people die via diagnosis. So he said the first thing when someone walks in, and this is a significant aspect of vibrant medicine, is that a person needs a faith, something they could connect to, something they could feel real, they could feel it real, that's beyond the appearance or the, or the limited of diagnosis. And you know, one of the things that Deepak Chopra said to me in, in our vibrant medicine conversation was that he didn't know AIDS was 100%. This is back in the 80s. He said, but surely the diagnosis is really killing people. Nick, Nick told me one day, so this billionaire came to him, and he had a whole team of doctors and people, and they were traveling. And this guy had pancreatic cancer with Nicholas Specials in. He's one of the things he helped people with. It's pretty much the medical, you know, they don't really have a, a, a clue, really, other than toxic treatment. So this billionaire came, and, and he, he was saying that at the same time, this architect came. It's a very much simpler person. wasn't a millionaire, very simple man. And Nicholas said that when he met with the billionaire, the billionaire was going to see, see another doctor in Switzerland. He died on the trip. And the other man, now that's 16 years later, he was still alive. But he said this man cho chose this path with, to, to embrace his body, to embrace faith, to share this vision with his wife. So we talked a lot about faith. Like what is this thing when someone could see beyond the condition and really begin to connect with, like you were saying, Nicole, that that the body has an accessible code and it's it's kind of communicating it. It's saying, I need this, I would like this. And to hear to hear what Kim she's doing that you're doing, it's kind of really honoring this other wisdom and wonder of the body rather than mandating what it what it needs. And and I I always I would say that's maybe the downside of, you know, people taking way too many supplements. It's kinda of like it's where's the body in terms of like the profound simplicity, the the honor, or as Nicole, we've talked about the idea that the symptoms are gifts rather than enemies. Big, big distinction in, in uh, vibrant medicine is that the body has symptoms to communicate and and speak in a way, not not to be um, kind of disrespected, but to be honored. Well, Glenn, I was actually watching. You are a, absolutely. Um, yeah. I was watching this video that Deepak did, and he was talking about prognosis versus diagnosis and how doctors will prognosticate and they'll give us a prognosis and they'll say, your diagnosis is that you have cancer, your prognosis is that you have two years to live. People hear the two years to live and that's what kills them. And you have people that don't accept that prognosis and they, they basically create their own story and I do believe that that faith that people have and that determination that no, this isn't going to sort of beat me or that's not going to be my story. I remember when my grandmother was diagnosed with diabetes and she basically told the doctor, no, I refuse to accept that. I don't accept that diagnosis. And then when they tested her months later, she tested she didn't have it. She never went on the medication. She never did any of that. But her faith was so strong that she reversed that diagnosis. And she never accepted it as her truth. And I think that there is a real power in that. And I often talk with people and I say, who would you be without that story? Well, you know, um, I think the thing, when I first when I first learned about homeopathy and the work of uh, Hahnemann, it was the first time that I I became aware of this idea of the vital force. So when I, when I, Kim Chi, when we spoke, um, 
And I was so honored to meet you because I guess the idea that we could actually treat these different systems of the body, the lymphatic system, the uh, that we could actually address things on these different levels. Because, you know, one of the things that Jack Elaine said to me, a pretty famous, you know, fitness guru, he said to me that his father died in his 50s. And he knew that didn't have to be his destiny, but he said he moved differently, breathed differently. So when I think about vibrant medicine, I think about growing young. I think about going beyond diagnosis. And I think about addressing and speaking in a way that you say so brilliantly, Kim, that the body is already speaking. The question is who's listening or not listening. And and the call, I love, of course, I feel the idea of wonderment. Imagine if everybody sitting in the emergency room had a, had a there was a video running about on wonderment, right? Because the emergency state is the state that generates cortisol, that generates the chemicals that, in some sense, create disease. So the question is, what releases this this wondrous feeling of ease and wonderment and awareness? And how do we practically bring that? We did another series on the Ultimate Hospital. So the hospital is not just a place you go to to deal with the symptoms, but it's a place where it, that sees you have a vital force and that there's a system in which you could tap into that system. You have a different life. And this, you know, like, uh, Colin, over at Regulat, he wrote me this incredible letter about this woman who was on Regulat. And she had been pretty much had given up her life. She was in bed with Lyme disease. She was exhausted. And every every day was the same. And most people around her kind of just considered her life was going to be like that. And she had written to Colin to say that taking Regulat really was a nine-day difference. Your energy came back. And that's the way I want to, I want to ask Kim, she, in the call, I want to ask you guys about this. So let's define vibrant medicine and share with people some, uh, maybe a case history or two. Um, in other words, what is it like when someone in your practices comes to life in a way they've never been alive before? Hey, give us a, a sense of that. Give, give me a, a, someone's come to you. Let's be a fly in the office for a second. They come to you with something, and maybe they can never see their life beyond being tired every day, or they can never see their life... You know, they're never going to be sexually active again. Whatever it is, they, they come in with something. And a lot of times they, they've come to you because they've had to go past a lot of other people to get to you, right? They, they've done conventional things. They've done this. They've done that. What happened? But can maybe give us a sense, uh, Kim Shee, what's it like when someone comes? Give us a, a small a sense of what happens in terms of the upside of vibrant so medicine I'll be- when they see you. Yeah, I'll be happy to. Often when the person comes, they already have been to different practitioners. They have already have tried a lot of different things, and the situation is still not resolved. So they often come desperate and feeling, you know, like they have lost hope uh, and so on. Uh, or they, often the, their main complaint is they don't have the energy, they are in pain, Whatever they do doesn't seem to work, and they spend a lot, a lot of money already, and they don't know what else to do at this point. So I think vibrant medicine is, is, is really nothing more than giving that hope back to them and to show them the pathway, to show them uh, uh, what, uh, what really happened. A lot of the time, the patient themselves feel a little bit lost. I have tried this, and I've done this, but... I'm still not able to solve it. I don't know where it comes from. It just came on one day. I was healthy, and then suddenly, boom, this happened to me. I don't understand. But disease do not happen that way. Disease do not suddenly come on uh, in one day or last month or last year, especially in the degenerative conditions, just such as uh, cancer and uh, and autoimmune. It is a process. It took years for us to get here. And there's always a cause. There's always a reason why we get sick. There's always a reason why we break down. We don't suddenly break down. It's physics. So the ability to be able to tune in and and track that and ask the body what really happened Uh, and to be able to track the history of it, it happened years ago. When you start out with amalgam feelings in your mouth, for example, at a young tender age during elementary school, for example, and then your lymph and your liver could not detox that. And over time, add on your lifestyle, all the things you do, then your nutrition, then boom, one day when your hormone change, suddenly you're not able to tolerate what you normally can tolerate. And now you are here where you are today. Boom, cancer happened. 
So there's always a reason. So if you can even detract it and tell them, look what happened to you, the reason your vision does not, uh, did not get better or getting worse, the reason you have all of this because years ago this is what happened. And if you can even explain that, suddenly they feel relieved, they feel better. And then they are able to follow. The body say, hey, I want this person, I want this. And then after that, it's this next step. When you can just uh, uh, spell it out for them and help them prioritize, they find there's a path, it makes sense, it's logic, they can follow. And then when they come back, they feel immediately better and more energy. And they feel hope, they look younger. For me, that's ripened living, that's ripened medicine, the mm, ability mm. to bring back the mm. hope and to, 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 mm. to show people, yes, there's a pathway. Or even if there may not be a pathway because the condition is so far gone, even the ability to be able to tell them what really happened in the past, give them relief mm. so that they don't blame themselves. Oh, you know, it's mm. because, yeah, mm. years ago, something really did happen to me, you know? So... That's what I, mm. I feel a vibrant living, a vibrant medicine is about, is to bring back that, that, uh, that the ability for people to feel hope. Yes, I, I am mm. here. I'm alive. Mm. Uh, it can work. I feel energetic. I feel better. Mm. And, and yes, uh, th th there's a way out for this. And suddenly they look better. They look younger. And they come back. They're full of uh, you know, energy and hope. Nicole. Yeah. I said to call Alexa, I love saying your name, but I was curious to see what's bubbling for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, really I love that. Again. I know um, it's going to cut to a quick break is coming up, so I just wanted to say that before you get in the flow and you get cut off. Yeah. Oh, you are so thoughtful. And so yeah. I will talk about beyond, beyond thoughtful. story after the break. Uh, well, what we'll do is we'll continue, we'll, continue, we'll continue with Dr. Nicole Kane. I want to thank the wonderful people at Regula and uh, your life's precious and joy. Stay with us for vibrant living. Your life's really just beginning now. Stay with us. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text, and for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Listening to the Vibrant Living Network, I'm Glenn Brooks. Here we are with the Vibrant Medicine Series about becoming more alive, more aware, growing young. Growing young is a way of life together. Happy Solstice, Happy New Year, and Merry Christmas. Dr. Nicole Kane, every time you're about to speak to Nicole, there's this wonderful pause for you so you can build that energy up and, and pour another whole level of message forward. I think that's along with Kimchi Moyer, biological and energetic medicine practitioner, Stephanie Alvarez, rainmaker. Susie Food Decoder is going to be with us in a moment sharing about what we can decode about food that you don't know about. When you travel, I mean, you think it's real food and it has, like, it's supposed to be vegan, but it has animal products. We're going to get to Susie in a moment. Nicole, it's you again. I don't believe it. There you are. 
I so what we're talking about is what does vibrant me- medicine look like, and we just heard a wonderful story about um, something that somebody at Kinchi had worked with, and it was very inspiring. And I wanted to, as I tell my story, I wanted to go back to something Stephanie that you said about the the identification as the disease um, and uh, how we see ourselves, who we see ourselves as is an important component of what our possibilities are. And so my story is about a young woman who grew up in the house of a very angry kind of tumultuous environment. Her father was violent and he would abuse her verbally and physically He was an accountant, and he would do taxes. Her job growing up was to help him with the paperwork, and if she made a mistake, he would literally kick her across the room. And he Mm -hmm. passed away when she was in her, her early 20s, and she took over the business. And she started to develop similar traits as far as the way she treated herself and identified as a worthy being or an unworthy being was to treat herself the way her father treated her. And interestingly, she developed an autoimmune disease called paniculitis. And paniculitis is characterized by the formation of tumors all over the body. And she had one in particular behind one of her eyes that pressed the eye outward and caused a lot of issues with Mm. her eye and her vision. So she identified Mm. herself as all of the negative narrative that she had heard growing up, but she also identified herself as I am an autoimmune sufferer. I am a person of paniculitis. It was her story. It's who she was. And so as a vitalist, we look at the fundamental root causes of these things. So we could go all the way back and talk about a genetic predisposition to autoimmunity. But then we can't ignore the other variables of psychological abuse, physical abuse, the identification of self, environmental contributing factors, perhaps um, maybe she needed regulat. So many things that contributed <laughs> that. And so what we – you got that. And so – I thought that was funny. That was, yeah, was brilliant. Thanks. I do what I can. And so what we did with his beautiful yeah. soul, we um, – We worked with her on her narrative of who am I, what is my purpose in this world, what 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 do I deserve in this world, what am I willing to let go of, what am I willing to grasp the hold of, and changing the identity and the way that she saw herself was fundamental of importance, and then we also treated her with homeopathic medicine, specifically uh, targeting the way that she was uh, physically, the way that she was out of balance emotionally, and the amazing and beautiful and brilliant outcome of that is that she enjoys. Nicole, the take take a moment. Of her. Nicole, always take a moment because a lot of people have no idea. They're confused. They have no idea. Just what's homeopathy? Oh, I could talk about homeopathy all day, Glenn. Homeopathy. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I bet you you could talk about it all day, all week. And go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> So I just want people to. I just want people. You're saying something so powerful. I want people to get how powerful homeopathy is. What it is, it's a it's a system of medicine that's prescribed on like cures like. And so when we look at her symptoms, the tumors behind the eye, the way that she reproaches herself, all of these things, and we look at her very similar to what Kimchi is doing with electricity, and that that vibrancy is. We're looking at her through a very in depth clinical interview, and we're figuring out what all of her symptoms are. And then we match that to the medicine, the homeopathic medicine that that is exactly identical to that state. And it gives the body information that will put it back into balance or allow the body to put itself back into balance. You can find homeopathic medicine at the health food store. Mm -hmm. I would love – I I was just thinking I'd love to walk – I'd love to have some of these people walk through the doorways and sit down. Like this, this case, the story that you're talking about, the woman, the the father. It's like, it's so profound and unusual because I think the story that a lot of us have uh, is the story of death. It's the story of, of degeneration, the story of aging. And so the story you just told and Kim she told, these are different stories. These are stories of regeneration, the stories of deep healing, and I love the fact they're also stories of a new interpretation and a new relational uh, connection to ourselves and others. So. It's truly profound, kind of like it's not that she healed physically, 
right? It's like a, it sounds like all these other dimensions of who she is are coming forward, and she's gaining a new life. And that's what I love about these stories uh, of this different of vibrant medicine. Now, I, my studio clock stops, uh, Stephanie. What time is it right now? I just want to make sure I want to get a, a time check with you. We what? Uh, how many minutes after the hour are we right now? Are we, are we at uh, like ten up right now? It's uh, ten forty-eight right now, Pacific Standard Time. So it's forty-eight yeah. after. Yeah, I knew you were going to do. That. I knew you were going to do that to me. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to. I want to step back for a second and just say that. Uh, um, right. So I, I want to say, when Nicole, you just hit upon another vibrant medicine practitioner, cardiologist was sharing a story with me about an Italian, uh, he's in his 80s, he had this, he was diagnosed with tongue, had t- cancer of the tongue, and Patrick said to me, Dr. Patrick Fratellone, he said to me, he says, you know, Glenn, he goes, I've gotten a lot of degrees, he goes, I'm an herbalist, I got certification here and there, and he says, but you know, as a human being, when he came in, he goes, I just, I recommend that he drink raw milk, and he goes, I can see in his face, he grew up in Italy by a farm, by a, by a dairy. And he said, almost to the moment, he said, well, milk, the guy had all these associations. Private medicine, the transmission of that remedy is a recognition of a person in something beyond the encumberment of the circumstance, the the belief system, the the conformity of the illness itself, right? So Nick Gonzalez, who was one of the most, I've seen one of the most brilliant oncologists, uh, because he left Sloan Kettering to actually treat the, the, the eight metabolic types. And he, every single time he said to me, he says, you know, if someone leaves the office and they could see, they could feel a new life and they could begin to see that. And, and it was like the, a difference. Cause he also, you know, he talked a lot about this idea that, you know, that, that when people buy into those kind of death sentences, um, very similar to the heart math Institute, the cardiologist there said to me, he says, you know, he goes, he goes, all these heart doctors, he goes, they don't realize they, co- they cause cardiac symptoms when they speak to people. They're not, they seem to be disconnected. So vibrant medicine has a connection. That is a deep, vital connection that when we speak and listen to someone, we're speaking to someone almost like a musical instrument. There's something in that person that could come alive and respirate and attune to new vision in that moment. Right? So that's another beautiful thing. Kim, she... Um, God, I just love this. I love both your stories. There's, there's so stories that I didn't grow up around these stories. I grew up around such a different story. You know, the story of my grandmother not being able to walk, my grandfather who was told he was normal. So I think another thing is that vibrant medicine is not normal. It's really a new definition of, of, of well-being and of growing young and changes our lives, changes the quality of our communities. Um, so kimchi. Oh, by the way, when I hear that story when Nicole just told, I just it just moves me. It's just like I want, I want to see. I love vibrant medicine because we could share this, and people could could get in groups. They could talk. You know, I had a friend of mine down the road, right from where I'm doing the show right now. I'm in Amherst, Massachusetts. Down the road from me, there was a support group for people with uh, fibromyalgia. I knew someone in that group, and every week they all sat around and said, "We're helpless and powerless. We could." Ex- we need to accept we have fibromyalgia. He was in the group 10 years. He could barely walk up a set of stairs. He was in his 40s. He went out to see this nurse practitioner in Colorado, and he says his first treatment, he said it was like the pipes came back out of the house. He said he didn't have flowing water in his body. His body was shut down. He says, Glenn, he goes, I've never been alive. He goes, I've been, he's like, he'd been dead 15 years. He goes to the support group at the hospital, and he, confer- he, he acknowledges he's dying more. So it's like, it's a different mindset, vibrant medicine. It's a different listening. And you hear that in these beautiful stories. I mean, God, we should have, I want to have videos because I want to see these people. I want to see your, I want to see, if she's willing to call, I want to do a video with you and her. I want to, I want to see these people because it's so profound hearing about them. It's wonderful. It's wonderment hearing this. May it imprint your, your, your cells today. May it touch you. Kim, see, what, that's something you want to add to the conversation. What's what's moving you right now? Oh, I just, you know, I just love the word vibrant medicine. It really speaks to me. Like I mentioned to you before, my password, my very first yes. password ever is vibrant life. So it just uh, <laughs> like what we yeah. call say, you know, it evokes wonderment. It's full of energy. It's bright. It's bright. It's light. And I think um, through this um 
uh, vibrant um, living, vibrant medicine show. We'll be able to share a lot together just to bring life back into our life. You know, to bring back life and, and so, life and energy. Kim Chi, I get to hang. I get to hang out with you and Nicole. I get to hang out with you guys at the, co- at the conference. We know these amazing people that were, are going to come, and um, I want to share with you guys what it was like for me one day. I want, I want to. I want to introduce you to the food decoder, Susie. I want to just let her share something. I, I share two tips today. So when I was in high school, and I want to, I want to say my my friend Deepak Chopra. I used to, I used to hang out with him a lot. And one day we, I got together with him. He said this one thing to me. He says, "We grow old and die because we see other people grow old and die. We grow old and die because we see other people grow old and die. That's pretty heavy duty." So I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the library at school. I find the books at school incredibly boring, and I pick up this book called Consumer Beware by Beatrice Trom Hunter. I don't know why I picked this book up. But I'm reading, the, I'm reading the chapter on eggs, and she's basically saying eggs aren't real eggs. The hens sit at these horrible um, fluorescent light, no air, no movement, and it's, there's no farm involved. <laughs> there's in freezer and prison hen, hens. And I'm reading it, and I get up, and I walk to the cafeteria, right? The cafeteria is all in vending machines, and as I walk past the, the men's room, it's filled with smoke. I never went in the men's room at uh, the boys' room. We want to call it at high school. So I looked at the cafeteria. I looked at the, the, the to the to the right, and I thought, "Oh my God!" I didn't even have the word vibrant in my consciousness yet. I was 17, but it was like I was thinking, "This path is not for me." And that's when I picked up my teacher's first book, Paul Bragg. He opened the first health food store, and he always had this picture of, of the guy walking towards. Now I see it as a couple. They're walking towards the light. They're walking. They're seeing something new. So right now, as you listen to the show. I want you to see something new. I cl- I close, if you're driving, don't close your eyes, but see something new. See a new path. You're walking in a new path. You're going past the old path. And take a sip of water. Exhale three times. See that as we go into the new year. See that and feel that in your life. Feel, take a new step. Go to, go, to, go to a practitioner that's an energetic or biological practitioner. That's a homeopath. They're listening to you. Bring your family. Like, I think there's one thing we got to discover. The one is that... that you know, we don't have enough pessimism. We don't, we don't have enough information or, or wisdom usually to go to another level. And that's willing to let go. So, Susie, I just I wanted to just bring you on so that during the holiday season when people are eating tons of stuff, I just wanted to see if you had – first of all, welcome. I'm really happy you're here today. I wanted to see Thank if you, you could Glenn. maybe decode a couple yeah. of things. What's that? Well, it's funny. Thank you, Glenn. And um, Kim, you're C, welcome. Nicole, Stephanie, everybody on. Um it's funny you talked about the eggs because I was just reading an article today about the USDA and the Organic Trade Association. They're actually the Organic Trade Association is actually suing the USDA over livestock and poultry practices, and mm-hmm. um, the Organic uh, Trade Association wants to implement better um, conditions for the poultry and livestock. And, um, you know, a lot of people uh, throughout the year have asked me, you know, is organic really organic when it comes to chicken? And I've always said yes, because I know there's all kinds of standards and things in place. But I'm really surprised or shocked that somebody's um, suing the USDA. And they... USDA wants to get rid of one of the standards because they think they don't have power to um, control it. So it's a really weird thing and a really weird sort of um, time and place we're in right now. You know, when labeling is such a big issue and really you don't know what's in your food at all. You don't know how it's prepared. You right. don't know where it comes from. So, you know, next year, uh, I think there's another regulation that comes out that really has to tell where, you know, it has to be really clear about where things are coming from, how they've been processed, things like that. So, yeah, and that all affects your living. Be, I mean, you know. what would be your what would be your what would be your tip? You know, when Michael Pollan debated the the, the owner of Whole Foods. One of the things he said, Michael Pollan, who wrote this pretty famous series on raising a calf and how he realized at a certain mm-hmm. point that corn makes calves sick, and that's the standard. But 
he also talking about this idea of local produce, that local produce could be much more recommended than, than organic. What's your take on something like that? Like, what's a couple of tips you want to leave people with during the holiday season of the new year about food? Just two things you think that you think they should just put in their pocket when they go into a store or go to a restaurant. Well, it's funny. I was going to talk about minerals, actually, because we're really mineral deficient during this period of time. But um, as mm -hmm. far as local versus organic, yes, I would always, if you go to a farmer's market and pick up um, local mm -hmm. vegetables, fruit, eggs, whatever, I'd always go there first. Um, organic, yes, mm -hmm. if you're going to go to the store, I mean, that's just the baseline because you don't know. You can't talk to the farmer. You don't know what's going on and how long it's been sitting on the shelf. So, again, if you go to the store, get organic if you can afford it. If you go to the farmer's market, buy local. Most of the time they'll say it's mm. pesticide-free, you know, things like that. I did want to mention, because this is the high-stress point in time, magnesium. You know what I want to say? I want to say, well, well you... Go, go to Ohm Times Radio, go to Vibrant Living, whatever, everybody's website on this. Go to, if you go to Ohm Times Radio on Vibrant Living Network, Vibrant Living Network, everybody's website. I'll give them out next week. I'll put them on our Ohm Times Radio, Vibrant Living Network. Thank you, Nicole. Love you. Appreciate you. Kimchi, I'm so happy we're going into the new year with the Vibrant Medicine. And Nicole, you're part of the team. Stephanie, thank you. Susie, we've only begun food decoding. Thank you for your wonderful contribution. Your life precious. Enjoy it. Be with us next week at 1 o'clock, East Coast time, the Vibrant Living Network. <laughs>